What's up audit fans? Today we are going to use ordinary household goods to help talk about populations. This is a video I made for my university students but I'm sharing it here with you on YouTube uh, because often there's a lot of confusion around populations. What is the population? What does it have to do with audit sampling? So let's get into it. Hi everybody and welcome to this video where today we're going to talk about populations and you might be wondering why I've got an assistant. I do need an assistant today because populations are really important when it comes to accounting and auditing in particular when we're doing audit sampling. Now what exactly is a population? Well a population is a collection of something, you know, the population of Australia, population of your school. Yeah. What else could be a population? A population of fruit and vegetables. <laughs> a group of fruit and vegetables, population of animals. So population means a collection of things. Also and when, the humans. And humans, yeah. So when we're talking about populations when it comes to audit, we're talking about transactions. So the population could be the start of the transaction, all of the sales order that go into a process, or a population could be the all of the journal entries where there's the recording of the process. So here we have a container of... Beans! <laughs> yes, various bits and pieces, because I thought this would be a really great way to demonstrate a population. So let's imagine this is all of the population. And so when we're auditing... Instead of testing every single one of these items in our population, instead what we could do is we could select a sample. Now, if we wanted to get a good sample, Rodri, of all of these, what sort of items are in here? Can you tell me? There's... Oh, we're going to make a mess. <laughs> this is going to make a mess. There's what do you see? One. There's tiny beans. Yep. There's brown beans. Yep. There's black beans. Oh, they're the same. They look pretty pretty much the same. But they're similar. They're, they're very similar. That one's black and that one's brown. And then this bean, it looks just like this bean, but just the biggest eye. Okay, so what you what what he's holding up there is that we've got chickpeas. All right, we've got some kidney beans. Those are going to be kidney beans. And we've got some barley. Okay, and then also, do you notice there's one other different one? Um, you see one more type? No. No, what we have is lentils. Okay, so we have, some, we have some brown lentils in there as well. I think I can see one. Yeah. yeah. And so the idea oh. is when we're sampling, we want to get make sure that we get a good mix of our population so that we can test whether our transactions or our items are correct. Now, yeah, we could <laughs> right onto different sampling methods now, oh. haphazardly. So there, he's just grabbed a selection, put it down, and there we have haphazard sample selection. Nope. We could also try and randomly sample. Now, randomly sampling would require me first to know exactly how many chickpeas, how many beans, how many lentils, and how many pieces of barley are in my container so that I could use statistics well, to actually create really, a random sample. Oh, well, you don't really need to do that because you can just make the pile and then count how many is in each pile and then you see how many is in each. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fine. So that senior here brings up a really good point. Another way that we could try and split our population is by stratification. Now, remember, stratification is we take our population and we break it up. So what would be, and he's actually naturally done it here, yeah. he's split up the population into the different types, our beans, our barley, uh, our chickpeas, and our lentils. And then we could choose within these particular subsamples. So we could pick some lentils. Three. Oh, you've picked three lentils. Okay. And how many of the little barleys are you going to pick? Oh, you've, te you've gathered all... Of three. the uh, lentils there, three. three kidney beans, and three chickpeas. And I need one, two, three. Why did you go three, three, and three? It's because I knew there was enough to make three, because if I did four, there's enough for four, but 
the, but this one wouldn't have enough. So and you're trying to make them equal. So you could potentially, yeah. in your stratas, make equal samples. But here, are there more little bits of barley than there are kidney beans? Maybe not, because these ones are smaller than these ones. And I feel we might be able to make one of these. So it could be possible that all of these could be the same as these. All right. So that sort of, he's, what he's implying there, and this is all unscripted, by the way, is that we could actually make a sample. We could pick more from our smaller items if we were worried that there was potentially more risk. And remember, this is all down to risk and risk assessment. If I thought that, let's say, we make these different components... Let's say if we have these, and these are different sizes of accounts receivable, for example. Can we have our hands clear so it can be seen on the camera? Great. So, I want you to see if you can find some more lentils for me. Um, All right. I just grabbed some out and then see. Okay. If there's any lentils! <laughs> All right. Lentils! <laughs> so, if these were my accounts receivable, for example, and out of all of these, my kidney beans are really the largest size bean... Uh, la largest size of item, I might decide that based on size of accounts receivable, I might select more from the larger because that'll give me a greater uh, dollar value of the population covered. And then I might select a sample of the uh, smaller accounts receivable because I think there might be less risk. Now, if I was looking for Wait, provisions for doubtful mean? debts, okay. yep, there's your, there's your lentils. If I'm looking for provisions for doubtful debts, then I'm going to change, you know, potentially how this looks. I might need to say, okay, which are the ones that are most overdue? Sit from this side, please. Come sit on this side. So if I looked at overdueness, if these were accounts receivable, I might have a large one, some medium-sized ones, some smaller ones, these ones. So here, if this was by date overdue, you know, I might have potentially 0 to 30 days in this particular pile here. I might have 30 to 60 days in this pile. And then I might have a few that end up in my 60 plus pile that I'm going to look for in more detail. So the population is really important because it is really where we start gathering our evidence. And so if I'm vouching and I'm gonna start at the end and I'm gonna work backwards through different documents, then my population isn't all of the documents. Instead, it is just that starting point. So the population isn't everything that I'm going to capture, but it's the starting point of the information that um, I want to collect. And then, you know, I might start at journal entries if I'm vouching, but then I'm also going to go back to look at proof of shipping, uh, you know, orders, invoices, etc. Those are all still going to be documents I collect, but they don't form part of the population. It's important to remember here that the population is really going to be that starting point. And you can't identify that population until you know what the procedure is. Once you've described the procedure, I'm going to trace, I'm going to vouch, I'm going to inspect something. Then once you know the procedure, identifying the population is really easy because it falls out of the description of the procedure itself. So if I said, okay, I'm going to vouch a sample of sales journal entries. Well, I'm starting at the sales journal entries and that's how I know exactly what the population is. So I hope this video clears up what are populations, um, how we can actually split up our populations as well to help gather effective audit evidence. So thanks very much for watching. And if you have any questions, of course, just post them and I'll see what I can do. See you next time. Bye.